Would have, could have, should have. This is the one that I heard that was about John Mayer. I wonder how all these men feel about Taylor Swift writing about them. Who cares? Right. <laughs> Due to people asking for a follow-up video where we listen to even more songs by Taylor Swift, today Elias and I will be listening to the 3AM tracks that Taylor Swift released after her initial premiere of Midnight. Technically, I'm gonna be the one listening, but since Elias and I are sharing the hotel room, <laughs> Elias is gonna be here. <laughs> you know the secret to getting engagement on your video, especially if it's related to Taylor Swift? You just say one thing that could be like slightly incorrect, and then the Swifties would be like, um, actually, that didn't happen. <laughs> Technically, Taylor Swift, back in 2020, was doing this. Can't believe you would say that. Taylor Swift would never do that. And then, boom, you got your engagement already. Yeah, so originally, she released an album called Midnight, and those were 13 tracks in the album that, I guess, matched cohesively with that theme of the things that she was going through in Midnight. And then, I believe the 3AM edition has seven extra songs. These were songs that didn't quite match the theme, but some people were saying that they liked those extra songs better than the ones on the album. Is called 3AM tracks? It's the 3 a.m. edition. So she released Midnight at 12 a.m. Then she released the seven extra songs at 3 a.m. Wow, she could have released a whole new album just titled 3 a.m. I'm assuming she wants to go along with the momentum because they didn't quite fit the theme with Midnight, but they could be like cousins. She's just trying to get her coin, and so am I, because thanks to the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. I have been using NordVPN for what feels like forever now. I'm literally using it right now while I'm in Thailand. It is so easy to use. You literally connect with just one click and you're able to have access to over 5,200 servers in 59 countries. It was actually confirmed by the speed test that NordVPN is the fastest VPN service out there. They also have an advanced anti-malware feature called threat protection. It blocks intrusive ads and web trackers. So when you're downloading a file, it's gonna scan through it to make sure that there's nothing sketch going on. And then it blocks any of the malicious stuff that could be trying to infiltrate your internet. So it's kind of cool because now it's more than just a VPN service, but it's also a cybersecurity tool. I use it when I watch Netflix and different countries, I might not have access to something that is available back in the US, but that's okay because I can change my IP address to make it look like I'm still in the United States and I now have access to it. So if you're interested in trying out NordVPN, you can get an exclusive deal at my description below. It is nordvpn.com slash with Cindy and it's totally risk-free because they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. And now let's get back to reacting to Taylor Swift. The first song in the 3 a.m. edition is The Great War. <laughs> So far, it sounds like a tumultuous relationship because she's talking about this relationship as the Great War. The fact that we just watched the movie after four tells me that Harden and Tessa would eat this shit up. They'd be like, oh my God, our relationship is like the Great yeah, you War. Know, it's either that or this song would be featured as a montage in the movie. <laughs> <gasps> yeah. Oh my God, can you imagine? I don't think Taylor Swift would allow that. She'd be like, not my brand being associated <laughs> with this shit. My knuckles were bruised like violets. Sucker punching walls. Curse you as I sleep talk. Not her writing in the perspective of Harden. All that bloodshed, Crimson Clover. Sweet dream was over. This, mm. this song is about our relationship, isn't it? This is you punching the wall saying, I'm tired of reacting to Taylor Swift. Diesel is desire, you were playing with fire. So I Y'all, I am so sorry, but this is basically the song for after. <laughs> I'm so sorry we had just watched it, but literally, Harden was telling Tessa that they could survive this relationship. I'm sure this is supposed to be a hopeful song, like, oh, this romantic relationship just experienced something really difficult, but now they're surviving a stronger for it. But now I'm just like, mm -mm, I don't know, crimson blood, bruised knuckles. It doesn't sound that good, Taylor. I think you should walk away from this. I'm sorry, but this song is very mid for me. Honestly, I'm not feeling things as much as I was for her other song. Well, this is just the first one, but yeah, this one is just okay. It's still the same kind of slow beat. Do you mean the same vibes as Midnight? I feel like we didn't really lose that much by not having the song included in the or full excluded. album. I wonder how much shit we can say in order to be canceled. Y'all are fucking so disrespectful. Can't listen to the lyrics. You don't fucking get it. Or in Harden's accent, you don't fucking get it. It's because you were single, so you don't really experience the tumultuous relationship that we've had. Another thing that's similar to After, somewhere in the haze, got a sense I had been betrayed. That's fucking Tessa every time something new happens. And she's like, I can't do this anymore. 
pardon. We yeah, got a breakup. I don't know, Taylor. Maybe you could have gotten your coin if you had worked with after. But I know you don't want your brand soiled. <laughs> Yeah, it was okay. The Great War, more like the mid-war. <laughs> oh! Next track, Bigger Than the Whole Sky. I got some comments saying they liked it. We'll see. Really? This song is about her mourning over maybe the end of a relationship or perhaps even the loss of someone, like maybe grieving over someone who is like has such a large presence or big personality. Yeah, and it's just her like having to let go of that person. It's another slow song. <laughs> I think it's fine. It, okay, this I one, like this one better than the previous one. Yeah, this one definitely fits the 3 a.m. vibe. Like, I can listen to this and fall asleep. If I'm working late or something on the computer, I just pop this on in the background. I do like the wordplay that she did with what could have been, would have been, what should have been you. Those words have very different meanings, right? Would have versus could have versus should have. So I do like the wordplay there. This does allude to death because she asks, did some force take you because I didn't pray? That's sad. You're gonna be asking this question after the Swifties kill me. In an alternate universe where we were both straight, it could have been us. I think this is also the song where some people were speculating that maybe she was talking about miscarriage. What? The lyrics seem to imply that she knew this person for a short time. So people are like, oh my gosh, maybe it's a miscarriage because the baby's only there for a short time. I feel like she writes the songs open to interpretation. So you can apply it to like the baby that you lost or like a lover that you only knew for a short time. So I feel like it could be anything. I liked it better than the previous one. And I actually think this is a song that might grow on me with like more listens. When I was editing my last Taylor Swift video, more songs grew on me because I was listening to it more while editing. I feel like this is gonna be one of those songs. I also liked the line of her saying, I've got a lot to live without. Because I feel like a lot of these sentiments very much align with grieving over someone. You have to move on with the rest of your life without them. And it's just a really sad subject to think about. Next track is Paris. So far, it is much more upbeat than the other songs, a little bit quicker. I think we definitely prefer quicker paced songs and more upbeat songs. So my interpretation so far after listening to the chorus is it's about how there's constant news and gossip going around, but she doesn't care because she's so enamored by this lover in her life that it's like she's been transported to another location, somewhere as romantic as Paris. Wow, that's some good interpretation. Yeah, I'm pretty good at interpreting Taylor Swift songs. Huh? I was just reading this and I'm just like, hmm, I wonder if it could be in these. <laughs> 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 I feel like it was pretty obvious because the first verse was about people asking like, oh my God, like, did you hear like your ex-friend did this and then this happened and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, girl, I'm too busy touching grass. I, I don't have time to keep up with petty news like this. And I feel like that was basically us during this Thailand trip. We're like, we can't keep up with the dumbass Twitter drama going on because we're too busy touching grass. We're too busy being in love. <laughs> Did she say, like, we're somewhere else? We were in Paris. We, we were, were in somewhere else. else. <laughs> Wait, that's a little weird. Interest. It's okay, Taylor, you tried. Yeah, she's definitely talking about how like gossip doesn't face her anymore because she was saying, sit quiet by my side in the shade and not the kind that's thrown. I mean the kind under where a tree has grown. She's focusing on like healing and nurturing now instead of being swept up in petty drama. Could be kind of like growth since her reputation era, which was like, you know, an aftermath of recent drama she's had. I think she's just like content with her life. Okay, next track, High Infidelity. Lock, broken, slur, spoken. That's just me getting hate crimes. So this song is about 
cheating partners. I think it is interesting to link the physical act of dancing in whatever that situation was to the metaphorical interpretation of like dancing around something. Your picket fence is sharp as knives. So like she could be suggesting that, you know, like that white picket fence house, whatever people saw as like, oh, the happy ending or like a happy relationship, maybe it wasn't that happy because it was sharp it's as knives. Ball. It's not as like, picture perfect as it seemed. And that's why she was committing infidelity. Storm coming, good husband, bad omen, She's talking about storm coming, good husband, bad omen. You know those guys who are like wife guys, they make their whole thing about like being a good boyfriend or a good husband, but that's kind of a bad omen because it's like, why are you projecting that so much? Like that Try Guy scandal or like any of the family vloggers where the husband turned out to be like a cheater. That's a red flag. Yeah, bad omen. And then she was saying she dragged her feet right down the aisle at the house lonely, good money. I'd pay if you just know me. Even even if there's stability and financial wealth, it doesn't really matter. The line I really liked was, you know there's many different ways that you can kill the one you love. The slowest way is never loving them enough. I feel like this whole song is basically just her justifying why she left Calvin Harris in the dust and pursued Tom Hiddleston instead. But that was also a short thing if I recall correctly. The Swifties will correct me on the lore. I think this was okay. Again, I feel like it's very repetitive. And I did get a comment from the other Yo, that we did where someone said that the entire album felt like it was just build-ups but no like no payoff yeah and i definitely get that musically but maybe we're just very preferential yeah. to like I mean, upbeat music this type of music i think is just lyrical instead of like music and like happy vibes you know next song is glitch i haven't heard anything about that one This song is referencing to her current partner. It was just like a fling and then it turned into like a blossoming romance and it's a glitch because they weren't expecting it. I didn't expect this to happen. It wasn't supposed to be this way, but it works out great. For that type of message, it's a really interesting like song structure beat choice for her. Yeah, right? Because it's like about a loving relationship Very that like she's happy about. Back. It is kind of sexy though. Like the beat, some of the beats here do allude to like computers glitching, but I kind of wish they went more with it. I feel like they could have played around with her voice a little bit more to get all glitchy. Like if you're gonna be conceptual, go all the way with it. But this is still like a show song so far. You know that one girl that's like doing her homework all the time for 24 hours, like lo-fi? Lo lo this is that version for the Swifties. Oh, I kind of like the way that it ended. <laughs> it must be counterfeit. I think there's been a glitch. You know, I guess it's like when you've been through so many shitty relationships and then you finally have like a nice one, you think, oh, there must be some mistake. So I think that's why she's describing it like a glitch. I agree. Would have, could have, should have. This is the one that I heard that was about John Mayer. I wonder how all these men feel about Taylor Swift writing about them. Who cares? <laughs> Okay, I really like that line. If I was some paint, did a splatter on a promising grown man. If I was a child, did it didn't matter, matter if you got to wash your hands. Yeah, so it's definitely about, you know, an older man taking advantage of a younger girl. Well, based on the pre-chorus, maybe she's like praying about what could she have done like differently or like if she Back hadn't then, crossed paths like with him. not have like rushed into it or made a different choice. If their lives hadn't intersected, could she have been spared from like all the turmoil that he brought upon her? I kind of get that because then it's like when you're in a bad relationship, you're like, or or if you've been through trauma, it's like how different could your life have been if you hadn't experienced that? I think this is very strong song lyrically. Memories like feel like a weapon now that I know I wish you left me wondering. You know how they say like, oh, it's better to have loved and lost. In general, some people feel like it's better to do something and then regret it than to always be left wondering what have you done it. I don't necessarily agree with that because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times my regrets were like doing stuff and then having it turn out terribly. I'd rather be left wondering. So I, I understand this sentiment. <laughs> Out of 
the 3 a.m. tracks. I think this, this is, is most powerful. The fact that she's saying, I regret you all this time and I fight with you in my sleep. Personally, for me, I find that relatable with my relationship with my ex. I mean, I guess I don't regret it because ultimately led to better things because <laughs> when I was trying to escape from their relationship, I found better things in return. But with the whole thing about I fight with you in my sleep, sometimes I might see him again in my dreams and then it's like the whole bullshit again. Like obviously, you went through something that you wish you didn't probably in the first place, but you don't regret it, but you still have you know, demons. And I think it's interesting the metaphor of her wishing she had stayed on the right path, like stayed on her knees, making religious references to it. Like if she had stayed on her knees and like been a good girl or whatever, instead of dancing with the devil, yeah. who was John Mayer, the white devil. Yeah, I feel like this is probably relatable to many people who have been in relationships they regretted. Yeah. really good yeah goosebumps wow really yeah look damn <laughs> oh my god and i've never been in a relationship but damn those are some really good lyrics it really happened and like she came from like a really deep place within her like that was also she finally builds up to something yeah like as if she was like resurrecting going up like up and beyond this was finally like a good build up where like it was chill but then by the end it's finally it was, like, like yeah and also she's like kind of yelling it a little bit which is good like i want more like, taking that. it back the song ended good. well dude this should have been on midnight i don't know why she didn't do it because i feel like people do be regretting old relationships at like midnight maybe she needed like one song maybe that's a 3 a.m mood <laughs> not a 12 a.m mood yeah. i wonder what the dear reader will be like so the final one dear reader she wrote for you because you're a reader and she needs to throw shade at you because you haven't been praising her music same to you bitch She's talking to the audience because so many people like look up to her, but then maybe she's saying like, I'm dealing with shit too. She's also telling them like in a way to reinvent yourself. Because all the previous tracks were like about her various relationships. She's kind of trying to give advice for all the things that like, she kind of had blind spots for. But then she's also warning them that like, I'm not perfect either yeah, she because- has flaws because she's like, never take some advice from someone who's also falling apart. Dude, the greatest of I wonder if this verse is her kind of wishing she was more private with stuff because she's saying you don't have to answer just because they asked you. The greatest of luxuries is your secrets. Part of like being a celebrity is having your privacy taken away from you, like especially her love life and her personal shit. So I wonder if she's kind of like wishing. Yeah, I'm definitely sensing that not to air out everything about you to the world. My I like this bridge. Finally some build up. The layering of voices. This kind of effect they should have used for glitch. I appreciate that it's experimental. That weird experimental version, I guess. It's just like different maybe types of voices, different types of Oh maybe. People. It's like weird high, deep layering of voices. I guess I get what she was trying to do. It was, a, it was a good song to end off on, I guess. One of my favorite lines is, no one sees when you lose when you're playing solitaire. People think she's perfect, but they don't know that because they've only seen the great successes that she's had. They haven't seen like her personal failures or her lowest moments. I feel like there were more bops in Midnight. However, I could be biased because I listened to those songs more when I was editing the previous video. The one that stood out most to me is would have could have should have okay so we finished 3 a.m edition let me know what your favorite song was because ours definitely was would have could have should have some people wanted us to also listen to folklore and evermore uh -uh, uh uh i already listened to folklore well you haven't listened to evermore people are gonna be like who is nevermore i haven't listened to either one i'm kind of burnt out with taylor swift so let me take a break <laughs> we got bad movies to react to okay <laughs> and apparently folklore and evermore are like her strongest lyrically i don't react to good shit on my channel i only react to bad 
that shit. All right, well, go ahead and subscribe to Elias and unsubscribe from my channel. Bye. Gotta rest my soul. I miss who I used to be. The two won't close. Stained glass windows in my mind. I regret you all the time. I can't let this go. I fight with you in my sleep. The wound won't close. I keep on waiting for a sign.